County Television, LCTV, and we'll be broadcasting it uh, What's on the, it? Channel 7, yes, this meeting, every time. All of these meetings will now be public okay. in a different way, you know, okay. I mean, they're public now, but... Um, Who's tool was that? Hey. that? Hmm? Who's tool was that? Wait, Who's, yeah. Zoom? No, you said something about the tool. What did I say? Well, you know my accent. I might have said that. I might have said something else. I don't even remember. It's probably now being broadcast to everyone. And we'll see a it's copy right. of this conversation again. So if so tomorrow, if I go to look on YouTube and put in Waterfront Community and this That's date. True. This will show up. Yes. And okay. it will also be online. Okay. And it'll also be on channel seven whenever they broadcast. Yes. LCTV, I think. So online where? On our town website? <laughs> on the LCTV website. Okay. Good to know. So this is all getting recorded. So if I don't do it. But you didn't start the meeting yet, right? So this is no, all off is, the record. Right. But it is recorded. But it doesn't know that. <laughs> we had to say that. Okay. Thank you, Karen. All right. right. Let's call us to order. Uh, for Don, if you want to sit up here, uh, is anyone okay with him sitting? I can't hear you if you don't sit up here. So sit up here. Okay. Let's see that. All right. I usually do. <laughs> so, what's our committee members? You've got some uh, meeting minutes from last meeting, but I don't think we can approve them because I need Frank. Uh, I'll, I'll you so, you sure you're more for your information and you know, just take it. Okay. Three is a huh? You don't have four? Dave, Dave was in here last time. Oh. And then you also have. Uh, okay. track meet. Going. Nice. We also have a meeting minutes from the Waterfront Working Group Subcommittee. And that's the last page. And that's the argument. Because we met last, last, last Tuesday. Uh, So should we move forward? Can we move forward on yes, the, and, and we'll go over the meeting minutes next time, hopefully. Okay, five master updates. Not a whole lot of update. Um, <clears throat> still pretty quiet this time of year. I did um I did talk to Ted and Earl, and they did find out that they can do the hot top from the low low water mark up. On the ramp from the low water mark. So I think they're still waiting for prices on that. Um, and I still think, but I don't know where I don't know where Dennis is with the study or whatever engineering thing that they talked about doing. Um, if they're going to just do the hot top, do you need that? I don't know. So Below the low water. Mark? If they're just going to fix what's there, yeah. mm -hmm. do you need an engineering study? If they just as long as it's fix fix fixable, is it fixable? You're talking about the parking lot also, or are you just talking about the ramp? Just talking about the ramp. I think the ramp needs to be done before spring, but I don't know. Yeah, I know you're a fan of that. Yeah. Um, and then we're talking to Ted. We're talking to Ted. They can they can rip out the 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 walkway to the float now 
far and low tide, they can rip all that out. The issue is going to be if they if they connect both ramps, they need a permit, I guess, from DEP. Because right now you've got a paved ramp and a paved ramp and it's dirt in the middle. So if they get rid of that dirt in the middle, they have to get a permit from DEP. Um, and Ted said that they probably, if they're going to pave it, they should pave the whole thing so that that entry flow will have something smooth to lay on whatever. Um, yeah, once we pour the bulkhead up front, yeah. 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 So <laughs> those entry floats sit well on hot top, on paint, on asphalt? I would assume they would. You think? That's where they are over there. Are they? Because, uh, yeah. Except way, way up. The last one is most of mine. On, on is paper. the last one just floating? Or yeah. Well, the last one on a real big tide, it's, it's on the mud tire truck. Okay. But it does. But that's okay. Them. Yeah. We can. But again, I don't think there's, I don't think anybody can move forward with anything until we figure out that engineering study that needs to be done. I mean, I don't know who pulls the trigger on saying, let's do it. But can, yes. but can we recommend that the town crew start removing that uh, walkway? Okay, so here's what I know. Sounds good. Here's what I know from <clears throat> Dennis, um, that he passed that on to Earl. I don't know who which one Earl is. He That's he right. passed on to Earl. He passed on to Earl to find out from DEP if we can use asphalt there. Not just fix what's there if it has to be all dug out and three done. Okay. Um, and from what Earl told me the other day, that they can use the asphalt. Okay, and then he seemed to. So he, yeah, he I guess he wanted to find out that information. I didn't have that the details, and he said that the then he would act on it in the next two weeks. So, um, so, so maybe maybe what you should do though is invite Earl to one of your meetings so he can update you himself. He's an easy one that yeah. talk to them. Okay. That way it's not I'm not being the middleman and telling you something Certainly. that's not correct. We can do that. And that's a great idea. I just didn't know who Earl was before about two thirty this afternoon. <laughs> um I haven't responded back to the guy from Bath about the boat yet. Remember, he wanted to know what what the town would charge him to go on the float, like the Virginia's for the winter. The Grand Banks boat, which the one I brought up last week or last week. I talked to Ted about that to see if he had have any problem <clears throat> putting an additional boat on there for the winter because the north wind. Pulls pretty strong right now. I know Ted's concerned that it's going to beat the float up. He's concerned that the Virginia and the, and the lobster boat beat the float up. Um, that's what I was going to ask you about. Um, we're, we're looking at probably November or first of December to put that boat there. Will that impact the lobster fishing in November? Yeah. I don't think so. I think the only boat that goes on that float anyway is um, Jody. Yes. The other boats you go on the other side. So if Jody can't park there, does he have room at another float? Um, I don't know. I don't know. I know that I know both of the inside floats are taken with lobster boats. I know there's one of the floats that two lobster boats are you know back to back on. Um, it, it may be tight over there. Jody's boat over there. Um, well, without knowing that, I'm not sure we could recommend it. As far as the fee, um, we charge the Virginia $80 a foot times their 50 feet, which is 4000 half a season, 2000 So if we did the same for this guy, we're talking 1280 and that would include the electrical that he wants and all that. Well, uh, we're still looking at meters. Now, I, I talked to a fellow about meters the other day. And what they use at these RV hookups is the old meter with the spinning dial and the indicators for hours. And uh, I guess you can get them at Gilman's. I haven't been to Gilman's yet to verify that. But that's, I think, what we want to install so that we know the electrical usage for the winter. 
whether it's used during the overnight kayaks in the summer is really good. But that would take care of the electrical for both the Virginia and for that boat. Yeah, well, I think I think you'd have to include in the fee. I mean, because I don't. How are you going to know who uses what for what? Well, if he's going to be tied up there all season, then that's that's what his usage would be from that meeting. So well, he, 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 he and Virginia both are going to be tied up there, though, correct? His boat will be there all winter, <coughs> so he'll be using the electricity from so that meeting. From November to May. April. April. But there's not going to be separate meters, though, right? One for him and one for Virginia? Yeah, call the will be. At each pedestal. Oh, okay. Is what I would recommend. Yeah. Okay, yeah, that makes sense. So, give these separate meters on one <coughs> pedestal. So, one pedestal is going into the pump out, and then one pedestal, the other, then there's the other pedestal, correct? Yes, the pedestal okay. for Virginia. Right. So, Virginia will keep her own pedestal, and then they, they will just log into the other one yes. because the pump over to get used in anyway. Why do you need the dial? Sure. Why do you need the dial? Why do you need the old style meter head? Why not the digital? That because um we found I guess they're economical they found they're not working on the creek repair. It doesn't <laughs> matter what it is, town's gonna pay the bill anyway. We're gonna bill that guy for it. I think the other the digital ones are CMP's problem. I don't know that we can buy those. I don't know. I, so that, that's what's available at our repo folks. Uh, you don't, the uh, pump out station doesn't need a pedestal. The pedestals will actually go on the water side of the uh, dock to oh. service the boats, but they just splice a line off that. That's all. Oh, okay. So it's not necessarily a pedestal, but just paddle. Correct. Okay. I just call it a pedestal. Okay. Thank you. So these meters are. I'm going to check it, Gilman, okay. to see what they cost, uh -huh. and uh, an electrician can put them in. Mm -hmm. uh, they don't need CMP to get involved. So I'm not going to commit to them until we figure out for sure what we're doing. Okay. Um, the sailboat, the sailboat. I I did um, I did finally locate the owner of the sailboat. Um, he was given a new court date, so he, he's been charged with abandoning the, the vessel down there. Um, he has written a bill of sale or signed over a bill of sale to the town, so we don't have to go through the, the you know, process to get the process to get ownership. <clears throat> he signed over the bill of sale in lieu of uh, dock fees and more fees. Um, he will still be responsible, and I'm requesting restitution to the court for the pullout and the storage. So we're looking at, what is it, like three something, four something. So seven or $800 was what we'd be looking for from restitution to the court, if that happens. Um, if that boat is there after, after May, we're gonna get billed again for storage. So- uh, Oh, here, right? Yes. Is yeah. is it, can, well, can, are we allowed to name the boat? What do you mean, name the boat? Well, it's got a name on it, right? If yeah, it's, I'm of. the name is um, something time. Lucky time? Think. What is it? Lucky time? Lucky time? Maybe not. No, I got a picture of it. I took pictures of it the other day. Um, time being. I knew it was something time. It's what? Time being. Time being. I don't know what the boats were. I don't know. Dennis Dennis made a suggestion of, um, I guess there's a like a municipal auction site about getting pictures of the boat and all the information on the boat and putting it on that site and seeing what happens. Um, if if the town sells that boat and gets you know eight hundred dollars, then I'll, I'll probably let the DA's office know that we're not going to be seeking restitution for the. I mean, I don't want to take advantage of the guy. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? I mean, so whatever we get for the boat, um, I would suggest we take our fees out of it and then give the rest back to him. If we, but I don't, I think he paid $250 for the boat. So mm -hmm. I don't expect to get a lot of money out of that boat. But 
maybe it's worth more than I know. Um, Would we be allowed to advertise at other places for sale once it comes? Uh, I, I think we could. I think you could advertise it wherever you put something out for bid. You know, like in the town trucks or the cruisers or whatever. Well, um, it's, a, it's a recreational boat, though. Not a... Yeah, it's a sailboat. It's a sailboat. Yeah. One little sail. Yeah. It's got a, I don't know anything about sailboats. It's got, it's got a big keel on so it needs a special trail to haul it. That's why it was so expensive to get it out of the water. Ah, yeah. Um, can you get it out just I can't pull it up. Of it? You know what? I mean, bring it up the transportation, I'll crush it up and put it in the trail and it's gone. That's oh, up for the town. Yeah. Hmm. That's up for the town. I'm supposed to meet with him tomorrow. Um, he wrote a, he wrote a bill of sale out, but it didn't have a lot of information on it. And so, Dennis wanted a better bill of sale. Mm -hmm. So he's coming tomorrow to do that. Yeah. Um, so that's pretty much all. I'm just wondering why he did it if it had any value at all. Because he didn't have no means to, okay. he got evicted. He just didn't have any means to deal with it. Um, he had a motor on it, the motor died. Um, and I think he just bit off more than mm -hmm. one he could do. Mm -hmm. The person who bought the boat, somebody went all the way up to um, Machias to buy the boat because they wanted the trailer. They wanted to convert the trailer to their sailboat. So they came down, offloaded the boat in Wiscasset Harbor, sold it to this guy for $250, and then they got their trailer. So, oh, and then God. this guy, wow. so this, I think this guy had high hopes for it, but. Remember what we talked about? Uh, huh. Yeah, both so just out of curiosity, Larry, from us, learning from our engineering study, do you need anything from us to recommend to move this forward? I, I just think we need to talk about it. It sounds to me like you guys have it all going on. Right, because I don't think so, because he's literally signed a bill of sale saying that the town owns it. So, yeah. So it's been right. handled administratively. It's right. being handled administratively. Okay, so right. it's off, kind of off our plate in this yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Good. Good. Hmm. Well, that's all. That's all I have. I mean, pretty slow. Having that for stuff pretty slow right now. Maybe for you. Yeah, for me. Callie may want to update you on how the site's going. It's going. Yeah, we've only had to resend like five or six emails. How many more do we register right now? Twenty-two. That's better than last year. For this spring. Wow. Yep. So moving along, commercial so here. You water. Huh? Bowl of water. Yeah, I just want to ask about the commercial peer use application because of, well, especially if we're going to try to have two boats over the winter on the rec pier and the in the commercial pier, you in the commercial peer use application, it's still got that hundred dollar tie up for lobster boats. So, do we need to change anything on that or or go forward? Seems to me that that. It's a hundred dollars. Do we need to add anything? Like, I think it's great that Larry will just move people around. Well, I, I don't have an issue getting rid of that. I mean, you got four, maybe five lobster boat ties right. that tie up. That's four or five hundred dollars. If this guy's going to tie up his boat down there for the winter, it's gonna, you're going to get a lot more than four or five hundred dollars. Right. So if you're looking to make money, I would go where the money is. Um, no, it's more just to have policy and rules that people follow with. Well, and but I'm not saying there's no room for the lobstermen either, though. I'm sorry? I'm not saying there's no room for the lobstermen no. either. Uh, and I know you've also said that they're good about going over on the commercial side. Yeah, I mean... I mean, they'll move. Yeah, I mean, Jody, Jody's the only one that parks on the other side, and he's pretty good about, you know, moving when you need to be moved. I think one of the things that you touched on last time was maybe redefining the time frame because we've had nicer weather later into the season mm -hmm. and it's been nicer a little bit earlier into the season so that's something you just might want to think about and yeah so changing the dates adjust right what do you think changing the dates of what of when for the off season yeah. tie up because yeah. right now it's after the voting season yeah. which is Right now it's October 1st. I think it's tie up there October 1st. Yeah, see, I think it should be midnight. 
Yeah. I don't know. What do we think? I don't see any fuzz about it being out after November. You think after November, Dave? Yeah, I don't believe there'll be anybody out after November. Huh? On the fudge side, yeah. They don't even fall out until December. Right. On the fudge side, I said. On the fudge boat side. Well, not, the, right. well, not the Walsman, but on the pleasure boat users. Walsman University pleasure boat. I don't think if we were to stay November 1st or go to November 1st, I don't think that there'd be a pleasure boat that would want to use the rec pier after November 1st. That's what I'm getting at. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> I think. So you think but that it is possible in October that there could be pleasure boaters coming out. Oh, yeah, you get some nice days in October. Depends. Yeah, that's what I'm. That's sure. what I just. I'm, 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 I'm curious about the uh, the hundred dollar fee and the use of the, the rec pier. Um, there is enough room on the commercial piers to accommodate the number of boats that are in that time of year. If you take a look, you know, she she pointed that out. Well, um, one side you got. Because you got most of two of them stay out in the mornings pretty much. Um, and but I guess my point is that if if you if you eliminated the use of the rec pier by the Watsman for that hundred dollar fee, and if there's only one doing it, you've got as the chief pointed out, you get another boat coming in that's more than gonna compensate for the fee of it. Um, you've also got People coming in through all through October, September and October, as more and more transients are coming in to utilize the downtown facilities, the restaurants, and that type of thing. Um, it, it just seems like it would eliminate issues. I, what are you asking? Are you saying you can put on the commercial pier? Correct. Yeah. Well, the other thing we could do too is um, one whole side. One whole side has got those worm carts on it. We could always move those worm carts, relocate those during that. Right. Time period. In the and, and then and put them on the watch put them over the dinghy side. Yeah, because you don't have as many dinghies in there. Yeah. I mean, so the and, cars... and that would eliminate all the problems of in you know October them wanting to come in there and that type of thing. Eliminate the policy and uh, keep it open for recreational folks. I think I'd want to throw out there that we have a pretty good relationship with the commercial fishermen mm -hmm. and that we want to continue that good relationship. Yeah. And that that's really important. Yeah. Well, by waiving the fee, you're not charging them for, for the fall storage, you know, fall usage. So you're kind of doing them a favor. Well, Kelly, are you suggesting to change the date? Yes. For what reason? Because we still have boats coming in in October. I, I, I'm not saying that we need to change at all. I just know that that's a conversation. That's something we had touched on when we were talking about potential changes that we might want to make. That it's entirely possible that you want to change that start date to a little bit later. That's your feeling too, Tom? Uh, mine was to eliminate completely. And that way, if you've got somebody that does want to come in for winter storage on that dock, it's available in, in November when you'd be wanting to come on there because most insurance policies. You have to be out of the water by November one or November fifteenth, depending on who it is. So if you're gonna if you're gonna try to gain revenue out of the, out of the recreational block, don't cloud the issue with in the commercial side. The commercial side has got well enough room to take care of themselves over there. That would leave the dock open, and if as this program advances for rental dock space down there. Uh, that allows you to start taking in more revenue during uh, October if you do have training boats coming in. Also, it just doesn't cloud. It doesn't cloud the issue. Well, we don't know when this fellow intends to start wintering his boat. Yeah, I forwarded you the email, right? I forwarded you the email. Yeah. Uh, the, and there may be a date in that email. But I, I, I get what Don's saying. About waive that hundred dollar fee and let them stay on the commercial side for free. I mean, right. they already pay for you to use the hoist, right? Is that a separate fee? Yeah, it's, it's, it's yeah. a separate fee. Yeah. yeah. So that way you're doing them a favor. It it doesn't limit what the recreational side can do as far as revenue on overnight rentals and that type of thing through October. And you know, it's it just keeps us clean slate. I think that will work as long as we don't pull faults up for maintenance and we don't have the room. That would work. Um, the commercial side is pretty good right now. Ted Ted repaired that bad one right, right. Um, last year. I know I know he plans on as soon as the Virginia comes off, 
as soon as the Virginia comes up, he plans on pulling, you know, that, that yeah. float there. He, right. But he plans on taking the float at the end of the end of the boat ramp and moving it over there temporarily while they rebuild that. Um, so yeah, I mean, like Callie said, we all work together pretty good down there with the fishermen, and I don't think it, I don't think it'd be an issue. I think that's a good idea. Okay. So you're saying waive the fee? Waive the fee and keep them on the commercial pier. Yeah. So work it out. Yeah. So basically, waive the, the fee and keep them on the commercial pier. Yeah, yeah. And you're, wa you're waiving the policy that's in place to rent. Uh, $100. $100. So the the rest, rest here that but has you have to recommend, right? The, the yeah, we have to recommend it too. Right. Yeah. So, so, down there, so that would just have to be so it's, It can't be much more than a paragraph on the rules mm -hmm. and regs. So you're, you'd, be, you'd be proposing to eliminate that. Mm -hmm. But if some people already paid that fee? Yeah. Let's talk time one. Well, get that. Keep yeah, we have a lock on the master building. And as soon as you put a lock on it, then people will come in and pack. Mm -hmm. But how much are they? How much is that thing? Two hundred bucks. Two hundred. For the season. For the docks, it for the dockage. No, no. For, for the massive building. Oh, massive building. Yeah. Excuse me. Okay, so do we need a motion for that? Mm -hmm. Recommend. Good. Okay, so I wrote. <clears throat> We recommend waiving the policy for off-season dockage on the commercial on the rec pier. I'll clean this up. Yeah. And along with the fee. And the Harvard Master will place the commercial wash boots. Harvard Master will be right. to in charge of organize the commercial yeah. boats on the commercial pier. For no charge. At no additional charge. That's correct. So the hundred dollars gone. Okay. Gone. All in okay. favor? Okay. Thank you. It's going to take me a minute. So, um, controlled water? Yeah. I, uh, I call the company that makes the systems for the car wash, where you put in money, <clears throat> get a certain minutes. And he said it would take him a year to develop that. And uh, it cost us fifteen hundred dollars minimum. So it tells me he wasn't interested in doing that at all. <clears throat> and then I called the company that puts the air pumps in at the garages, like we've got one across the street, because the money changer is outside all the time. It works quite well, and all we would need is a simple signal to a solenoid valve. And the minimum charge for that would be $650. So I was down the waterfront and Jody came by and he says, I understand you're looking at ways to control the water flow. Uh, so I told him what I just told you. And he says, why don't you put a lock of key on it? Hmm. On his nozzle? Sounds good. How would you do that? Huh? How would you put a lock P on a nozzle? Put a ball valve to control the water, fill the holes with a handle, and put a small cable on it with a lock. Sounds complicated. No, it's pretty like simple. Mobile board. And that would el eliminate anybody from just coming in and putting the hose on and leaving it overnight. And that's Which what happens quite often. That's quite a lot of those. I, I think that's 30, why it was so hot. 30 hundred or something like that. It was like double. It was a lot of money. This last season. Well, I, think that, I think that water gets used. I, I didn't find any issues with people dropping the hose over this past year. Maybe in the past. I didn't see that this year. What I did see this year, though, was a lot of people using the hose um, from non residents filling up water jugs mm -hmm. to, you know, non resident boaters coming in and filling up their water tanks. And to people just washing the bird shit off their boat. Is that a service we want to provide? I don't know. I mean, people people use the. I mean, it's costing the taxpayers money for that water. Yes, it is. And um, taxpayers that don't use right water. So I think if there's a way to, you know, for, to for the people who are using it to pay for it. It would be a benefit for the taxpayers. That's right. Mm -hmm. 
And I don't think we're looking to make money on the sale of water. The maybe. simple thing is that you drop a quarter in and you turn the dial, and that trips the solid. Like well, at the car wash is what you were talking about. That's very complicated. Oh. What I'm looking at is just if you want to still have them pay for it, they have these small mechanical devices. You put a quarter in, you turn the dial, it clicks, that sends a signal to the valve and opens it. And at times, whether you want to give them a minute for a quarter or whatever you want, whatever you want to charge, well, I think water, it can be it can be made with those simple mechanical right. devices. I know, I know I had to get air. I had to get air when I used my daughter's car last week. And I put my credit card in the air machine and it cost me a dollar and a half and they gave me four minutes. So I could use the air post for four minutes. So there's got to be a way to do that with water. Yeah, mm -hmm. I'm sure there is. And that's when mm -hmm. I say a solenoid valve. What that, you know what a solenoid valve is? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. That would be the simplest way. And that way, instead of locking it up, um, no, that no. would be a way that the service is still available. That people would pay for it. You have to, yes, you have to put money in the device. Right. Turn the dial. That will activate it for however minutes you want it to be. If you want, you know, three or four minutes for fifty cents or a dollar or whatever, so it can be done. I like it. Where does the device go? Where? Yeah. Well. We have to go down and take a look and see what's most convenient. They might want to repipe that. Well, the fishermen are going to use it in the dock. If the fishermen are going to use it, they're going to want it on the commercial pier. Mm -hmm. If the recreational boat is going to use it, they're going to want it on the rec boat. My suggestion would be to, depending on how expensive they are, if they're only six, seven hundred dollars, put one on each float. Right now, we don't have water over at the uh, Right pier, though. Right, but you got to run a sewer line to the rec right pier, so run a water line with it. Yeah. Okay. Okay. We'll so. Look at we'll my suggestion. Okay, you want to look see, into it further before we? I don't think any notes on it. Yeah. Okay. So you go on with the card swipe. No. Idea. No. <laughs> okay. Put in the corner. Yeah. Okay. I like the yeah. Catch, I like the catch light idea. Yeah. I like it. Well, I think that thing I sent around with the, the box. I think that's what that did. Was you could, can, you could uh, people could have accounts. I think that that was one of the options. Okay, this so more okay. investigation. Thank you, Jim. Okay, so moving along. Uh, working group update. We had a nice meeting out of David Staff's office last week. The minutes from that meeting I gave you in your little bundle. So you're welcome to review them. They're looking at um, yeah, objectives for getting us closer to a 10 year plan and the, uh, you know, as part of the commercial. What is it? Comprehensive plan, excuse me. So, um, yeah, we talked about that a lot and, you know, what to do next. We could really use a good map of the whole most packet waterfront that we're covering so that you know what you're talking about when we talk about this point or that cove or whatever. Is there anyone in the office? Probably. And you're welcome to review the minutes. Um, and uh, moving along, sea level rise. We're having a presentation out of Mary Ellen's next Thursday, next Wednesday, next Tuesday at 4:30. So I think that's important. And maybe we can get our hands on it. We should get our hands on a map out there then. And then um, your policies and fee updates uh, moving along. As I recall, last spring it came up about the fees at, at Main Street Pier or or recreational pier that we charge. Again, 
the other one that increase uh, as I recall. So if, um, if we're feeling like we're good where we are, apparently the electrical uh, situation worked out pretty well. You know, doing a reading at the beginning of the season and then a reading at the end of the season and just said, you know, building. I the, thought that was uh, from the division leaders. It was the year before, but this past season it worked well. Okay. Apparently. So Molly, apparently, that's for Molly, it was worked out. Um, well, the care policy DFAs, aren't we? Isn't that task down there to? The vendors on the pier to make it attractive for them to come with here. Mm -hmm. Okay, so while we want to raise the fees, it seems to be doing okay now. I'm just asking. No, I just I swear it was in the ethers to um, okay. re examine them. If we don't want to do that, then if we're good with mm -hmm. how things are, then what fees we talking about? Uh, recreational uh, pier, the rec rental the footprints on, on the main pier. street. For the vendors. And, yeah. The vendors. Am I allowed to make a motion? Because I can make a motion that you don't raise the fees <laughs> on the main street here for the vendors. Okay. <laughs> you're, you're allowed to make a comment. Oh, okay. I would <laughs> like to make a comment that it has gone up exponentially over the last five years. Yeah. So I think you guys are at a nice cap. On the record, just <laughs> your name and how oh, you come. Um, oh, yeah. Todd Jubaville and I own the Potter Shed. On the main street pier. Right. Thank you. You're welcome. What are the fees now? Um, ten by twenty for a year is a thousand. And the fifty one hundred for thirty by thirty four. Yeah. Thirty by thirty four. Yeah. And then you pay for your own electric if you want it with a what you guys have a seventy five dollar deposit. deposit. If you month. exceed that, if you exceed that by the end of the year, then you're paying. You pay. And everyone has their own meter now, which you guys straight out. Uh, each location has a meter, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. uh, along the perimeter. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. And I don't need electric again. I'm I'm not doing that. So. Yep. Keeps it simple. And my signs down. I noticed that. Thank you. It took me a minute, but I'm you know I got two businesses. Right. So. <laughs> Which uh, so I got to keep that below the ridge line. Is that what yeah. you're going? Yeah. Also sign below the ridge line. All right. You still have it on the roof. I know. Yeah. So just. It's just a pain in the neck for me. It's more work. I got to yeah. paint another sign for the back side. <laughs> Reds isn't in compliance either, yeah. you say. <laughs> yeah, Reds is in what? 1938? Well, that doesn't matter. Yeah, I know. Everybody's grandfathered. Oh, it's kind of off to me. I did talk to that, asked the code enforcement officer about it. He didn't seem to care. So, but yeah, we, we have, have, we have what the ordinances say. It's right. We were trying to get everybody in compliance on the peers, you know. Well, I, yeah, I know. I just, you know, but the um, it started with a height issue, but that white building is 11 feet, four inches, and has been there for six years, and no one said anything. Oh, yes, they have. Oh, they have. To oh, chop the roof. Oh, I made I made measurements, pictures of every building, every vendor down there, and went to our town manager with it, and he made the call to grandfather. Uh, everybody that was down there as far as height and width, but not as far as their sign ordinances. We had to comply with every every ordinance in town. That's what I was told. So, so that's why we got you to move your sign down to the top your sign to the peak of the roof. And, mm -hmm. All right. So I'm just, how many vendors are down there now? Eight. And how many spots are there? Four. Four? There's Ron. It's nine spots. There's Ron. Well, the spots were, he was asking how many are actually there. Yeah. Right. There's the woman in the old lobster hall field. I can't remember her name. Yeah, Industrial Main. The yeah. Industrial Main. There's yeah. me at the Potter Shed. There's Ron at Forgotten Recipes yeah. and Jam. Yeah. And then there's the Sprites. So there's four. So four. And how many spots are there? The nine. commercial. There's nine okay. spots on uh, nine nine chamber of commerce. So it would be beneficial to lower the rates and get more people down there? I like that. <laughs> you know what I mean? Well, to fill up every spot? I mean, well, we, we had pressure <coughs> from. <coughs> well, I remember when I first came here, it was ridiculously low, like 300 yeah. bucks. Yeah, it was, it was, it was crazy low. Mm -hmm. Right. So, so we had pressure to make it $4,000. And we said, no, come on, we want to 
rented it, the whole point. So we kind of tried to find a happy medium, and that's what we came up with. That's what it's been for, I think, three years now, and it seems to be, yeah. Seems to be working okay. I don't. I don't want to raise any more. Me personally. I mean, is there a way to advertise to get more vendors down there? Mm -hmm. the well, the, well, the it's... other glitch I think for some people, the vendors, is the insurance policy that you have to have is not exactly cheap either. I forget what it is. Like, it's like a million. million bucks. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I've had it for eight years. So she does the books and knows all the money. But uh, and that's a town requirement. Yes. But that's just something to consider. Is that I think that might be something. You know, you got to go get a million dollar liability insurance clause to start something down there. Um, you know, which makes it expensive, but it keeps riffraff out too. I mean, yeah, I mean that's not horribly expensive, but it is a cost. You know, doing business. You know, it's just it's, it's the way it is. You know, but. It works. I mean, I mean, why do it to a town? You've got to cover your butt, you know. I mean, it's just a, so. What is so? You're a vendor down there. You have insurance, yes, yeah. for your building. Mm -hmm. So if I go down there and walk across the Creamery Pier to go to his building and trip on a loose board, who do I sue? The town or him? It's town's responsibility. Yeah. If you go into my shop, I think, and a ceramic lamp falls on your head, so that's not that's, that's probably on me. Right. That's if you can remember. <laughs> there's a lot more involved than just the cost because um, first you have to have something that's going to sell. Uh, you've got hours that you have to put down there. You've got the weather. It's it's not easy. It's uh, very involved because, like Frank always tells people, that you know in the springtime you're liable to get very discouraged. Right. Because you'll have bad weather, uh, a rainy day, and you still have to put in your hours because that's required by the policy policies. policies. And uh, so, really, the fee becomes minor after yeah. all of those other factors get involved. I guess I would lean towards his recommendation about not raising the fee and try to focus on filling up more spots. That's mm -hmm. that's what I'm saying. Yeah, and the fee's not. Ridiculously high. I thought it was when you first did it, but today, you know, everything is more expensive. Yeah. So it's for the price of doing business, really. Yeah, that, that Which, same spot in Rockland is like four dollars Yeah, but this is in Rockland. No, <laughs> I understand that. That's why. That's why we're at where we're at. Yeah, this is in Rockland. This isn't. Well, yeah, you know, we had a resident. This is was, was Yeah, you know, was Catholic. Catholic. Rockland charges X amount, and we should also, and he would not go away. Finally, and so finally, we finally came to a compromise that said we're not Rockland. Yeah, and we've got a completely different situation here, mm -hmm. and so I think we're in pretty good shape. I think we're in good shape. Yeah, that whole point is we want to bring on every day. We want them both. Oh yeah. I so the more them people down, the more people look at everything down on this here. Everything. It just would bring more people. The um, oh, on a good note, if you guys want to hear, for we had a good season. It was fine, you know. It was same as last year, I think, for sales. But this year we were we extremely accurately took note of everything that went down there and how much everything cost. So we had like how much money and product we had down there, and when we closed and calculated everything. Because you want to notice, my my shop is on the honor system, mm -hmm. so it's open as long as Sprags are open. It's open, and we were off twelve dollars. Oh my god! That's a turtle. That's one of my turtles. I mean, some little kid pocketed a turtle, yeah. broke a turtle, and what threw it in the trash. Or <laughs> there was a clerical error, but it was twelve bucks, yes. which wow. I thought was kind of cool. That I've been that's, doing for eight years now. To the small town friend. Nothing. Yeah, it is. It really that's is. Good. And I get a lot of cool little emails and comments mm -hmm. from people, especially New York, the Bronx, or Brooklyn, you know, just dumbfounded by this whole thing. You know, so I think it bodes well for the town. That it does. It was 12 bucks. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Which is a turtle. I know that's a turtle. It's the only $12 item we have down there. <laughs> okay. So, yeah. That is great. Isn't that great? That's great. That's yeah. Thank you. You're welcome. So, uh, okay. So,
Our thinking is keep it as it is. Yes. Okay. And uh, electric meters at recreational theater. We, because need, we need to have one before the street place starts up again this year. So should we recommend that? Is it what Ted ended up pursuing that? That Ted pursue? I have no idea if he pursued it or not. Well, they left, I thought they left the one that was on order, but it was all back order stuff. So. No, that's. That's for the that's for pump out project. For this is for the so that the like ice cream place down there pays their own electric bill. Right. Because they're and running because air conditioners, also, freezers, all that stuff. And there's two other rentable spots. And a 75 buck deposit. How do they pay at the end of the year when there's no meter? Just saying. Just, it's crazy. Yeah. The honor system. Uh, yeah, I think, that, <laughs> I think we got the honor system. Yeah. Unless we want to raise the electric fees. No. Okay. We'll That's put a meter down there and so take a picture. Okay. So, so, so about readers. Hmm? I'm going to go to Gilman's oh, and talk to them about meters. Okay. Awesome. Now, do they you. use do they use town water too? The ice cream place. Mm-hmm. Yes. We can get that done through. What you're talking about the shack. Yes. Yeah. And there's two more spaces down there? Yeah, rentable. Huh. No, you're talking, you're you're talking on the main street, yeah. She's talking on the recreational here. No, she's talking she about, talking about the rec pier next. So I mean the shack is there, but there's room for two more yeah. shacks. That's what I was asking. Uh, yeah, yeah, I didn't know that. Yeah. Easily. Yeah. You know, they kind of spread out with their and the picnic tables and stuff with those things. But then around. when they have a Fourth of July event, is there going to be a conflict of dance theater versus vendor, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Hmm. Oh, boy. <laughs> well, Fourth of July, uh, uh, Linda, like actually, which is, she closed my shop at before dark, get a little earlier. Because it's, you know, everyone's down there to watch the fireworks. Right. So there's a lot of people down there. And so it's kind of like, yeah, we can just shut early today and not have to worry about Because it's not, it's not tourists, it's not shoppers, mm -hmm. it's everybody in the community going down to the pier to watch the fireworks. So they're not right. here to shop anyway. Right. So I mean, that's what I've been doing. Okay, so you go look into some meters for the breakfast. I'll talk to Chris about the water too. Meter the water to the shack. Because right now it's not needed. So if we meter the water to the shack, should we meter it to the commercial pier? It is metered to the commercial pier. It's metered. But it's not separate from the No, wall. it's metered out through the wall. The commercial pier has its own meter. It does? Yes. Just so we know how much water the commercial pier is using? Yes. Just the commercial pier yes, is on the two meters. One just inside the door that does the pier, and one that comes up from the street that does the bathrooms. So this. So do we get two separate we get, bills? This, this bill over here does everything that comes in to that building for water. Okay, and then, and then it separates. Then the meat over here does what goes out to the pier. And then you can set, subtract the two, and that's what is, is done out on the pier. That's two separate meters. Hmm. Okay. Other business? Uh, the first Just question. Maybe yeah. Just a, a comment on the. Oh, I, I heard the fees that you're talking about to uh, put over on the rec pier for uh, water meters and uh, electric meters and that type of thing for those two two pedestals. Um, if you remember, we discussed the rates around the, the competition of the towns of the of the waterfronts. Um, I've never experienced a meter bill for electricity when you come in. Mm -hmm. It's a flat rate. Uh, and I think I've given, given them to you before. It's anywhere from twenty-five to fifty dollars a night, just for electricity. Just for electricity. This so, is right. Right. If, with that pedestal, 
I think if you do the math on that, you're going to find that's far better than anything you're going to collect on a meter spinning for 24 hours. The reason for the meter is gone is, is yeah. for a whole wintering. No, I, I understand. But that's all. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Cool. Okay. All right. So and it's then, not it's not for the that train, you no. know. They have a method to determine what he charges for bios. Right. Okay. All right. So uh, I'm sorry. That's okay. I, 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 I misunderstood that. Um okay, anybody else? Okay, the um, first presentation of our 2324 budget is going to be Wednesday, tomorrow night at six o'clock right here. That'd be exciting. Anybody wants to come? I'm bringing M&Ms for everybody. Yes. shaped. <laughs> you get your own bag. <laughs> okay, great. Keep you sweet. So, motion to adjourn. Okay, bye. Thank you, everybody. Good morning. Yeah. No exception would be if someone came in and they for smoke. I'm sorry, what? Okay. Someone came in with a lighter wall and then wanted to judge the value.